Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Aimstone channel. Let's start with the Bitcoin market. Well, today we are in red, and that is quite unfortunate. As of the time this recording we are trading at around $23,000. Maybe by the time you're watching this video we could be even a bit lower. Yesterday we had a decent pump, we were about $24,000, but we were not able to reach the $24,700 which was local high that took place a week ago. The good thing is we're still remaining in this positive momentum. And tomorrow it is the huge day, the new inflation numbers for July will be released. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's just take a look at the Bitcoin Fear Grid Index. It shows that we are in 42, which quite surprising, it's very weird. Today we are at 42, but yesterday we were at 30. So how does that make any sense? Yesterday BTC price was about $24,000 and today it is at $23,000. And yes, this Bitcoin fee agreed index is indeed updated. It is as of August 9, 2022. And today is August 9, if I'm not mistaken. So, speaking of inflation numbers, tomorrow the new CPI numbers for July will be finally released. And to remind you guys, the numbers for June came up at 40 years high at 9.1%. And so far, according to this chart, the projection is 8.7% which is 0.4% lower compared to June numbers. And I think the July numbers could be even a bit lower. I think we will end up somewhere between 8 and 8.5%. Tomorrow, 8.30 am Easter time, the inflation numbers will be released. And I think if inflation will be better than expected, the entire stock market and of course, Bitcoin will skyrocket. However, if inflation will come up above 9%, then of course we should expect a major sell-off in stock market and even maybe in Bitcoin market. It seems like yesterday Senate passed the Inflation Reduction Act and now it's been moved to the House. The House will determine if this Inflation Act will be approved or not. What do I think about that? You want to print more money to fight the inflation? Of course this is a terrible thing. It's like you want to offset fire with gasoline. Of course if you put gasoline in the fire, the fire will explode even more. And it seems like this could be the case here as well. So they are raising $430 billion for this Inflationary Reduction Act. Of course this will not reduce inflation at all, in fact it may raise inflation. And here is the bunch of stuff that they will include in this Inflationary Reduction Act. They will include tax credit for extended energy producers. They will also include tax credit up to $7,500 for the offering consumers to buy new electric vehicle and bunch of other stuff. It also includes to hire thousands of IRS new staff to go after the smaller guys. They want to squeeze every single penny from the low and middle class people, especially those people who are in crypto. They will go after them to squeeze every single penny, which is of course is a terrible and terrible thing. Okay, let's take a look at this first Bitcoin chart. This first Bitcoin chart represents Bitcoin Mary's multiple. A Bitcoin Mary's multiple is a simple indicator that represents when Bitcoin is undervalued, when it's fairly valued and when it's overvalued. Usually, when Bitcoin's Mary's multiple is below 1, it means Bitcoin is undervalued. And this could actually be a great time to stack more sets. To find Mary's multiple is very simple and easy. We take Bitcoin price divided by 200 day moving average. Current Bitcoin price is around $23,000 and 200 day moving average is 33,000 bucks. So yes, current Bitcoin price is way below 200 days moving average. If we divide those two numbers together, we will get 0 0.69. So it seems like we're in quite similar situation where we were back during the Corona crash, where we were back during 2018 and 2015 bear markets. And the good news is the MERS multiple is inverting upwards. If it's not a fake out, then we should enter into another bull market. Here's another fantastic chart. This chart I took it from Kathy Wood, Eric Invest. This chart shows what would happen if institutional money would go into Bitcoin. If 1% of institutional allocation would go into BTC, BTC would skyrocket up to $100,000. That's more than 4x from this current price. But what about if 2.55% allocation would go into Bitcoin? If that would be the case, then Bitcoin price would be about $200,000 per coin. At the same time, if that would happen, it would minimize volatility in their own portfolio. It seems like win-win to me. But what about they would invest 6.55% allocation into Bitcoin? 
If that would happen, BTC would skyrocket. BTC would be about $500,000 per coin. BTC most likely would flip gold. At that point, BTC would be at around $10 trillion in market capitalization. And what the hell is 6.55%? 6.55% is a very small number. At the same time, if they would allocate some percentage into Bitcoin, it would maximize this sharp ratio. And the sharp ratio maximizes risk-adjusted return. And that's exactly what every single hedge fund manager wants to have in their own portfolio. If you would have maximum sharp ratio, then why not? Allocate small percentage into Bitcoin. Here is another fantastic chart. It represents global M2 money supply comparing to Bitcoin year-over-year -year rate of change. As we can see, in 2017, they printed a lot of money. Well, not actually that much. They printed more than 8.2% of the total reserve, while BTC skyrocketed by 1,300%. Then the global M2 slightly reduced and BTC went into the bear market. And something similar happened in 2020 and 2021. The global M2 increased by 11.8%, while BTC skyrocketed by almost 800%. And since then, they reduced global M2 while BTC went into another bear market. So yes, we definitely see a correlation in the rate of change in money printing versus the rate of change in Bitcoin price. This chart is my favorite chart of the day. This chart was created by Greg Foss. This is his mental model. The total global assets is $900 trillion. What if BTC would take only 5% of $900 trillion? Well, 5% would be $45 trillion. So yes, BTC would be relatively higher than gold. In fact, it would be 4 times higher than gold. But let's not forget that Bitcoin network has a limited supply of only 21 million BTC. So we have a fixed supply. 45 trillion divided by 21 million, that would be about $2.1 million per single BTC. Well, it sounds good, but what is the probability we will get there? If you would assign 10% probability that BTC will be at $2.1 million sometimes in the future and you would assign 90% chances that BTC will be at zero, then your expected value would be at $210,000. So you can see the math, even $100,000 is a decent amount, it's slightly less than 10x from this current price. So yes, it seems like Bitcoin is highly undervalued. If you haven't bought enough BTC, maybe this is the time to do so. According to Bloomberg analyst, Bitcoin is likely to transition to risk of asset in second half of 2022. Well, how so? Let's take a deeper dive. Bitcoin is likely to transition from the risk on to risk of asset in the second half of 2022. The macroeconomic environment is rapidly shifting towards the recession, said Mike McGlone. Here is what he said. I see it transitioning to more risk of asset like bonds and gold than less than risk on asset like stock market. And here he explains why he believes that. The crypto market has flushed out most of the speculative access that marked 2021, and now it is now reaping for the fresh rally, according to Mike McGlone. Mike McGlone also pointed out that the Fed's aggressive hike in the interest rates will lead the global economy to deflationary recession, which ultimately favor. Bitcoin. Well, what do I think about that? We all know that at least historically, BTC proved itself to be a risk on asset, especially during the corona crash. During the corona crash, everything dropped, including Bitcoin. And Bitcoin during the time dropped by more than 50% in one single day. Ouch, that hurts. However, over time, with Bitcoin adoption increases and BTC as an asset becomes more mature, then of course the price will rise. Let's say it will stabilize somewhere around half a million dollars per coin. Then of course at that point I see that volatility will decrease and most likely BTC will act as a risk of asset similar to gold and bond market. Will that happen? We should wait and see. But now let's take a look at this quick video where Mike Novogratz gives his thoughts on this Bitcoin market then he will give his prediction for the end of the year. Let's take a look. Uh, you know Mike, very few CEOs see their stock pop after reporting a $500 million loss, but this indicates that investors believe that you're turning a corner. The question I have for you is, if you're turning a corner, where do you put yourself in the industry now? Are you going to start throwing your hat in the ring when it comes to potential beaten down acquisitions, when it comes to deploying capital in a bigger way again? Yeah, listen, 
we reported we have over a billion dollars of cash. Um, I think that's part of the reason the, the, the market likes our, our stock today. Uh, we also, listen, over the last 18 months, we've made over a billion dollars. And so while our balance sheet got marked down, uh, during the up-down ride, uh, we managed to sell a bunch of assets at good prices. Uh, our, our operating businesses are doing well. And yeah, we're looking at everything. I'm not in a rush uh, to buy something. I buy something that's gonna be an add-on or something strategic. Uh, I don't think, you know, somebody waved a magic wand and everything is healed, both in the crypto markets or, quite frankly, in the uh, in the traditional markets, um, right? There was a tremendous amount of damage done in confidence and to balance sheets. I think the worst was over, right? We put in a, a, a fear-based bottom, but rarely do you see V recoveries. And so I think that, you know, we're kind of in this for the for the long haul, and I'm looking at strategic things with a three to four year horizon, not a, a three to four month horizon. Yeah, speaking of the three to four month horizon, I rarely ask you for price targets for the year when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but given we're seeing a merge, given that you have told investors here that we need new energy in this system, where do you think the industry goes this year, given that you still see some choppiness ahead? Listen, I think the, the Ethereum merge is a really big story, right? It, it has been, I mean, when I first bought Ethereum, you know, way back in 2015, you know, they were talking about this move from proof of work to proof of stake, and, you know, it's finally here. And that gives energy to the space. It's going to reduce the, the supply of Ethereum that's sold every day dramatically. It's going to reduce the inflation rate. And so I think Ethereum has a real story. And, you know, Bitcoin's story is very much tied to the Fed. And we're still in a really complicated scenario. The last few data releases have started saying, well, geez, maybe that crazy idea of a soft landing is possible. I'm still really skeptical of the soft landing, but the market's telling you they're believing in it. Um, and so assets are going up. I think the Fed's going to be able to stop raising rates. Uh, you know, Wednesday's a big, big deal. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday's number. If it's a if it's a horrific print, you're going to see another sell-off in fixed income and probably sell-off in risk assets. I want to double down on retail because you brought it up. You know, you mentioned earlier that you're skeptical of a soft landing. And to the extent that means you mean there's a recession coming, that it'll be a hard landing. How much money will there really be on the sidelines to put into crypto, let alone any risk asset? Listen, you know, the Fed increased money supply at a rate that we'd never seen before. And they're slowly withdrawing that. There's still a ton of money in the system, right? There was excess savings in, in retail. That's getting worn down some. But there's monster cash flow. These people got really nervous. I mean, we had a, a pretty dramatic sell-off in the first half of the year. And so I don't think we're going to see what we saw last year when money's flowing in and it's all, it's all booming. But I don't think it's Armageddon here yet either. Uh, and so, again, I, I, you know, will Bitcoin get through uh, 30,000 on this move up? Yeah, we'll see. I'm doubtful. I think we're going to probably be in this range now. I'll be, I'd quite frankly be happy if we're in a, a you know, 20, 22,000 or 20,000, 30,000 range for a while with the next move breaking up. Ethereum's got a little bit more juice. It's at the top of its range. It can, hmm. you know, takes out 2,200. It could, it could go right. higher. And that's got a real story. But I don't see, you know, the, the mania that we saw in 2021 or 2017 reigniting. Mike Novogratz believes Bitcoin will continue to consolidate sideways. And most likely, according to him, BTC will end up somewhere between $22,000 and $30,000. Well, this is still a decent range. If BTC will consolidate sideways, this is a great opportunity to stack more sets. But let's also not forget that BTC can skyrocket in just number of days, so you definitely do not want to miss that rally.